So it's a sunny morning in Melbourne, Wednesday morning, and I'm about to take you down to Jimmy Rum Distillery in Dramana, not far from Bass and Flinders, which makes stunning gym. And we're gonna have a chat to James McPherson, owner, founder, all around genius of Jimmy Rum, the only rum distillery on the peninsula, and I dare I say, the only rum distillery in Victoria. Let's go and smash this, have a chat to a fascinating guy, look at some fascinating booze, well, delicious booze, try it already. I'm not going to lead you guys in blind. We're going to smash this because the interview for the magical mystery, magical distillery tours of the peninsula. Let's go and deal with this, people. Let's go and have some fun. I, I wasn't born and bred here, so I, I still probably another 10, 15 years before I'm considered local. I hear you. I've lived in Melbourne 39 years. I, I got the hell out of Dodge when I was 19. Yep. Had my heart broken and there was a bus south and I jumped on it and went, I'm going away for a month. Yep. Um, 39 years later, I ain't going back. But I hear you. Have you mentioned Queensland? Um, but wouldn't it have made more sense to actually go to my hometown where there's just a couple of hundred million hectares of sugarcane? I mean, you've got it on tap. Yeah. Because you'd have to be the most subtly rum distillery in the world oh there's a there's a few that are a little further south there's not many like australia we're one of only a handful of dedicated rum distilleries all we make is rum yep so i think there's only about a dozen of us in the country including Bundaberg and beanley the two big two mm -hmm. uh, most other distilleries there's about over 50 rum distilleries in the country now but most of them are only making a barrel or two they're doing bigger gins and whiskies and they're more of a multi-tasking distillery but yeah. um, being rum was the only thing I liked, we went and did that. So, um, whereas, why did we choose down this way? Well, we did, I knew it was not gonna be further north, because it was, I have no real desire to move further north, uh, but right now it was either gonna be Victoria or Tasmania. So, we even considered WA as well, but um, again, as you say, the difficulty is getting molasses is getting that down at the moment it's not too bad we get it from northern new south wales and it's just trucked straight down to us there is a, a lot of molasses all over the country in non-sugar growing areas mostly because we're sitting in and around um, agriculture so they use molasses for feedstock etc ah. so horse and cattle there's a lot of molasses used for that sort of stuff so it's fine iron and well Rum is the most environmentally friendly spirit in the world. We use somebody else's waste to actually make our product. So molasses mm. is the waste from making the sh from the sugar industry. It's what's left. If they can't get rid of enough of it, then they they ditch it. They're not going to stop making sugar. So we're saving them from uh, ditching the molasses in a river somewhere. So. so you heard it first. This is not so much a rum making distillery. It's a we're saving the environment. That's the reason why you should drink more. You're actually saving the environment. I mean, what were they going to do? Tip it into the local creek? Well, you're saving a rum. You're saving a fish with every glass of rum. I like that. Mm. So, mind you, you don't serve fish here. Um, no, or you do? You do, yes. Okay. So it's an environmental cause. You've got to go and drink more rum because you're saving a waste product. Don't let things go to waste, people. Rather than throw it away, just damn well drink it. I mm. reckon. It's, mm. you know. That's a beautiful spirit. It's like um, the Endangered Distilling Co. Mm. in Tasmania. Mm. They, I've reviewed this week, their um, root juice gin. Yep. And they're doing the same thing. They get all the, um, they've got, I think they either own by or paired with a um, root juicing company. Yep. And what they don't use, they turn into gin. And they've got a bagel vodka and a bread um, vodka coming out. And they simply turn all the old bread mm. and ferment it, whack it through the still, and that's it. Because it 400,000 tons a year get thrown out. Why throw it out when you can damn well um, drink it? Yeah, we can stop. Kika. All right, Kika. Yeah, I know it's 4%. Kika. So, the second, last question. Who is Matilda named after? Oh, Matilda's named... Oh, sorry, got... but the way, that's Matilda, I so, think. She's got several reasons we call her Matilda. So... Mm -hmm. She's Italian, she comes out of Northern Italy. So hence the reason she's gorgeous. I mean, genetically impossible to be ugly out of Northern Italy. She doesn't yeah. 
the the background is why we went to Northern Italy. I did want to buy an Australian one, but no one in Australia had uh, really too much experience with making the big collop in the middle. Uh, plenty of them uh, doing the pots and stuff, and there's some very gorgeous, well, nearly as good looking as Matilda. Um, but when I approached one of them, he said, well, I've never done a column before, but I'll give it a crack. And I thought, well, I'm new to distilling. I had never distilled a day in my life when I bought Matilda. So I needed a still that I could 100% guarantee it worked. So Barris Industries out of Northern Italy, they've been building stills for over 120 years. They are actually traditional wrapper still builders. And we've just had it all modified to help us make different styles of rum. Um, but yeah, so we were searching for ages for a nice Italian name, and uh, the first um, Bella was a little too obvious, so we decided against that. Uh, a little bit for a while, she was, and I, one of the reasons we don't pick this name is because I can never remember it, but King Neptune's wife, she apparently is uh, Italian by origin, but um, she was also goddess of seawater, and you can't drink seawater. So, figured that wasn't a good name. After about a good three months we were trying to find a name, um, I jokingly turned around and said, stuff it, let's pick an Australian name. I said Shazza. Uh, no one liked Shazza very much, so we ended up going, I said Matilda. And the girl I said it to was my graphic designer and she lives in Montreal in Canada. And she just went, oh my God, I love the name Matilda, it's gorgeous. I laughed and said, you better go and research it. And um, off she went. So I went to bed, she woke me up at six o'clock in the morning, crazy excited and just said, I just sent you a three page email on why we have to call her Matilda. So I got up, read the email and I can remember four or five reasons from it, the rest of it I keep forgetting. But um, the one, the first one is it's actually a dramatic name, Matilda. So, um, and Germanic is one of the major regions of Germanic was Northern Italy, Austria, Switzerland, Southern Germany. It's one of the major Germanic reasons. The name actually originates from that region. So, yeah. and Matilda is actually a joining of two words, war and maiden. So it means war maiden. So it's not so much as still, as still as the arm shield maiden. Yeah. Bagatha. Yeah, well, they used, there used to be, um, yeah, there used to be, in World War II, the British actually named the entire class of vessel the Matilda class. So they, they all made it. They also had a Matilda tank. And a Matilda tank, yeah. Um, and if you go and check, like Colin McCulloch went about the Julius Caesar series, mm. the Romans are actually bitching about this transalpine Gaul and then there's cisalpine Gaul. Yep. And their side of the Alps, um, I remember one, one point, some Roman has got red hair and he starts shooting his mouth off and they turn and say, oh, you're not a real Roman, you're just a German. Because <laughs> you're, you're from north, yes. north of the Po. Yeah. Um, also, Reinhard, Reinhard um, Messner, the guy who did all 8,000 metres without the first time around, yep. Reinhard is actually the, out of the Tyrol. Okay. So, um, Northern Italy, up near Austria and that, yeah, because they may have Italian passports, but they're actually Germans. Yeah. There's a lot of it. It's the reason why the Germans were stuck there at the end of World War II when they were still pushing north because they were bumping into the Germanic, German regions of Italy. They were no longer dealing with you know, Italian Italians like your chief mm. distiller or yeah. you know, Mario Androtti or something like that. They were actually dealing with Germans. There's all these tall, blonde haired, bared haired Italians. They go, you're not, a, you're not Italian, you're a crap. Yeah. So, no. No, it's, uh, the, the lines are not what they used to be. So. Mm. We, um, we're in Northern Italy next year, and I must admit, I've heard about Northern Italy. I had a friend who did um, placement over there. And I said to him, oh, what do you think of Italian women? He goes, Italian women in Italy look nothing like the girls here. And I go, why? He goes, for a start, they've got style and, and they look good. And I said, what about the wine? He goes, a, a, a euro a litre? There's a lot to like, like about Italy. And he says, it's much better wine. Yes. Okay.